What if every day was a test and the choices that we made impacted the results of that test? Today, we're gonna to talk about life management. Let's dig in. Hey everybody, my name is Elliot. My wife Tiffany and I have the privilege of pastoring this group of people called Lifeline Church. I'm so glad that you are tuning in today. Our mission here at the church is to be a lifeline by leading people into becoming lifelong followers of Jesus. I believe that no matter where you are watching from, that God has appointed this moment for you to tune in and to really hear something that's gonna make an impact on your life life and this is from God and it's for you as always if you would be so kind as to like comment and share this content it really goes a long way to helping get the word out and it's just being a lifeline to others around you you never know who this could really benefit and help today we're going to talk about life management like I shared and we're going to be talking about that out of Matthew 25 it's the parable of the talents but we're going to break it down a little bit so that you understand hopefully that it's not just about talent it's a parable of the talents but let me just start by reading i got my notes right here matthew 25 starting in verse 14 and we're going to read through 30. this is the parable of the bags of gold depending on what translation you're reading starting in verse 14 again it will be it referring to the kingdom of God will be like a man going on a journey who is called who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. Now, who are his servants? Uh, why don't you go ahead and just put yourself in the story that I am one of God's servants. And so I'm putting myself and that God is putting his trust in in me. He's entrusting something to me. Verse 15 to one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, and to another one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. Now some of you may have heard this story as the parable of the talents. And that is kind of distracting because we think talent means like I can play banjo or something. I'm talented. I can sing. I can dance. I can blah, blah. That's a talent. But in the Greek, what this this word is is talenton I, I know whenever i try and speak greek it always just sounds like i'm on king of the hill i don't i can't get past it can't get around it but you know what i'm we're just going to get through it talenton just represents six thousand denarii six thousand denarii is a, is a talenton translated talent that's six and a denarii is a day's wage so that's six thousand days wage okay so five talents would be 30,000 days wages just quick math here which um, at minimum wage would be three million dollars that's five talents okay <laughs> so now we're talking now we're having some fun okay this is a lot of money Simply put, there's a lot of money that was entrusted to these people. Verse 16, let's read on. The man who received five bags of gold, remember that's, that's $3 million in today's currency, give or take, if that's minimum wage. He received five bags of gold, went and put his money to work and gained five bags more. Oh, <laughs> he got $3 million more. dollars. Verse 17, so also the one with two bags gained two more, but the one who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. <sighs> These men did what they could with what they had been given. That's what I want you to get out of this parable. They were given something and they did what they could with what they had been given. What's important for you is that you will be held responsible when it comes to management for what you've been given, not for what your neighbor's been given. You're responsible for what you've been given, not for what your neighbor's been given. If you don't, are not doing as well as Susie down the street, or Joe has got, you know, turbo diesel down there, don't worry about what they've got. Worry about what you have. Are you managing well what you've been given? Okay, verse 19 goes on to say, after a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who received five bags of gold brought another five 
Master, he said, you have entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. I think $3 million is more than a few things, but according, it depends what master you got. Three million, I guess, isn't a whole lot if you got the right master. You've been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share in your master's happiness. All right. Verse 22, the man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you've entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I've gained two more. Verse 23, his master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share in your master's happiness. I'd be happy too if someone earned me one and a half million dollars and all I had to do was go on vacation and come back and they earned me money. Yeah, I'd be a happy master too. You know what I'm saying? Can you say promotion? I'd promote that dude in a heartbeat. You understand what I'm saying? Verse 24, the man who received one bag of gold. Now this is important for us. This is where we need to really lean in. Master, he said, I knew that you were a hard man, harvesting where you had not sown and gathering where you had not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. In verse, um, no, in, in Luke 19, I believe it is, there's a parallel passage here, Luke 19. And the term that they use there is, is uh, put in cloth. And that term uh, in, in the Greek is not just is not just passive, it's not just lazy, it's actually, it's negligence. Is, is, is this person was, I hid it in the ground, I put it in cloth, it's actually considered negligence. So what's being communicated in the word of God here is that this person wasn't just passive, well, you know, I'm just gonna wait. No, they were actually negligent with it and didn't, and didn't even protect it well. Verse 26, his master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvested where I had not sown and gathered where I had not scattered seed. Well, well then you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I return, I would have received it back with interest. You could have done anything with it. You could have done anything with it, but you didn't even try. What makes the master even angrier than anything is not that the servant tried something in faith and failed, but it's that he didn't try at all. You know what I'm saying here? Is he didn't try anything. Never let fear freeze you, but let faith free you that the master would rather see you try something in faith. Are you listening to me? Try something in faith instead of being frozen in fear saying, no, I can't do anything. Listen to this parable. And, and let that free you. Verse 28 goes on to say, take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has 10 bags. For whoever has will be given more and they will have abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. Crazy. And <laughs> here we go. Verse 30. And throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where they'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Obviously there is something extra going on here. This parable is, is describing You've been given a gift. You've been given a gift of life. You've been given a gift of not just money, of not just talent, of not just this, that, or the other thing. This is, this is speaking of, I think it's obvious. Well, it's obvious to me that this is talking about something larger and that we are to do something special with what we've been given. It's important for us to do what's right with what we've been given. This, this is the lesson, this is the takeaway. Whoever uses well what they've been given, more will be given. If you can let go, have faith, believe that the master is trustworthy, he will multiply what has been given. When you use that brain that God gave you to be fruitful and multiply what God has given you, then you will learn that you can step out in faith. You can start to see how gracious our master really is. But if you clutch, you know, if you... If you go, it's mine. Did I hit my microphone? It's mine. I'm not going to let go of it. Nobody can touch it. If we clutch, even what little we have will be taken from us. The punishment for negligence is severe. The question that should be on our mind is, what have I been given? What have I been entrusted with? What, is, what, what am I going to be held accountable for? 
You know, a quick story about my life is that um, after I got saved, after I became a Christian, I, I had some actual talents that I came into my faith with. I'm a musician. And that's one of the things I prided myself in as a young man. And I could do that and move forward in. And I'd been using that talent to, to bless myself for all my life. But when I came into the faith, I, I over time just began to realize that I wanted to give what I had been given, not only back to God, but back to other people. I wanted to simply bless others with what I've been given. And so I turned my, my, my talent of playing the drums and playing guitar and singing into something that could bless others. And as soon as I did that, the Lord showed up in my life and allowed me to record my own album. Some of you don't know, I have my own album. You know, don't ask me for a copy because I don't, they're not around. And this was years ago, back when things um, sounded a bit different. But you know, the Lord blessed me. He blessed me with the ability to kick something off my bucket list and say, hey, record your own album with all original tracks. And it was a lot of fun to do that. And that didn't even come about until I turned my gift, the one that God gave me, back to Him and began to multiply that for Him. See that there's something special about taking not just the talents, but the time and the, and the treasure that we've been given and managing it well and turning it back to Him and blessing others with it, that God really starts to bless us when we do that. Listen to this. What we manage well increases. I'll repeat that. What we manage well increases. And what we manage poorly decreases. What we hoard for ourselves decreases. And I want to break that down into three categories, time, talent, and treasure. This is the way we talk about it at Lifeline Church, that we've been given three categories that, to, to manage. Time, talent, and treasure. Time, talent, and treasure. Most everything can be broken down into those three categories. So let's talk about it. Managing your time. I got one word for you. Priorities. Priorities. I just started reading a book about how we have, we all have 168 hours in the week. All of us. The president of the United States does. Pastor of a local church does. Um, a Starbucks barista does. We all have the same amount of time, 168 hours. Now, a lot of people say, man, if I only had time, I would do this. If I only had time, I would write that novel. If I only had time, I would learn another language. If I only had time, I would learn an instrument. Well, guess what? The best writer, the best musician, the President of the United States, all have the same amount of time. So that's really not the issue, is it? That's really not the issue, is it? The, the issue is, is how are we actually spending our time? I want to challenge you today that there might be some things that need to be taken off of your calendar. There might be some things that you didn't put on your calendar, but you are just spending your time doing that really don't even add value to your life that you don't even want to be doing. All you need to do is look at this thing and say, you know what? I shouldn't even be doing this. I, I, I would su suggest put your most important priorities on the calendar first and then let the other things that come your way fill in the gap. My question for you is this. Consider the use of your time and what is something that you should invest your time in? What is something that you want to invest your time in? And prioritize that on your calendar. And what are some things that should come off of your calendar that you shouldn't be doing anymore? That's time. I know those are huge, huge questions. But you know, online, you know, I got to rush through it. I got to rush through it. Go back and, and listen to that again if you need to. Manage your talent. Second category is talent. Okay, every Everyone, everyone. Now listen to me out there. Everyone has something they're talented in. Everyone has a talent. Everyone has a gift. Everyone has something that they are innately good at. I believe that from the very inside of my being. I believe that you have gifts and strengths that not only I don't have, that, that most people don't have. You have something that only you can do you you have something that god gave you to bless others and don't get it twisted that's what he gave you that talent for is to bless others 
Believe it or not, there is an avenue that God created so that every human being could use their God-given gifts to bless others, and it's called the church. That's right, the organization of the church. A lot of people only like to look at the church as a family, which is true, but it's also kind of selfish to look at that as only something that benefits me. This is my family. These are my people. It's also the church was was made to be an organization of people so that God brings people together and their different strengths and abilities are used to bless one another and that God can organize us around that. He made a Apostles, prophets, pastors, evangelists, teachers, that sounds like organization to me. That God has given you strengths that are made, we're we're made to benefit others. Many parts, one body, the church body, the body of Christ. Now at Lifeline, what we do in order to put people in the right place that can do the right thing at the right time so that we're all working together as one body, not as separate, everybody's just doing their own thing like a lot of our families look like, we, we call it growth track. Growth track. You come through growth track and we have it online, we have it in person, but growth track actually helps people identify their strengths, their spiritual gifts, their personality, so that you can fit in. We actually do a Myers-Briggs assessment, and you can do this online with us. Like it's, you should try it. There's a link in the description. You should try it. You should try it with us. And, and you can fit in so that you can be a blessing to others. It's easy, it's simple, and it's God's will for you. And remember my story. When I started using my gifts to primarily serve Christ, they went further and faster than a lifetime of hoarding that gift for myself. Question for you is this. What is one way that you can use your gifts to serve God and others? Lastly is this. Manage your treasure. Manage your treasure. Many people don't know that if they would just budget their money wisely that they would really have more than enough. I remember the first time I budgeted my treasure, my my money, that it actually felt like I got a raise because I didn't know how much of my money I was actually wasting on non-essentials. But once you create a budget, that really goes away. So it's actually like building a budget for your life. And this is this is so, you know, some of you are thinking maybe, I don't know if you are or not, but a lot of people go, "Oh, church should never talk about money." Well, that's ridiculous. Why would the church not address something that so greatly impacts your life? That doesn't make any sense. What you're really saying is don't tell me what to do with my money because I don't want you looking at what I'm doing with money, but if if we are really above board and and I'm 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 happy to show anybody my budget because I'm proud of it. Like I actually feel pretty good about the way I've budgeted my money and I I want for you to feel that way too. Like Man, anybody can see this and see that I'm really managing well what I've been given. Um, Like I remember the first time we made a monthly budget and we found out that we were spending like 10% of our income on eating out, Tiffany and I. It was super embarrassing to find that out, but you can't fix it if you don't know it's there. And oftentimes we don't know what we're spending our money on because we just don't even look at that. And we're too busy telling other people not to look at it. But what did fruitful people do? Like the third servant, the third servant in our parable. I wonder if he even realized that he had been given about $600,000. You know what I mean? So the third servant, he was given only one bag of gold that, as we talked about, represented about $600,000. That sounds like about you know, a good chunk of your lifetime. So this parable actually works to your life. You know, you've been given $600,000. Even if you work minimum wage over the course of your life, you're earning about that much. What do you have to show for that? What do you have to show for that? And the, the, the master's coming back saying, man, did you even invest it? Did you even do something with it? Did you even make a difference in my kingdom with that? Or did you just neglect it? Did you just get by on it? I wonder if the third servant in this parable thought about what he could accomplish if he was more strategic with that money, with with the treasure aspect. Because like I said, we have time, talent, and treasure, but the treasure shouldn't be neglected either. So what did the the fruitful people invest in? 
They invested on things that they felt would bring a return. And that's what we need to do. Invest in your education, invest in learning, invest in retirement. Is it okay to hear from a pastor from a church that you should be investing in your retirement? You, you should. I don't, I don't wanna see you struggling when you're retiring. I wanna see you doing well. And so I, I don't have any problem telling you that you should be doing that with your money. I just don't. Invest in the people you believe in. Is there people around you that you believe in? Are you, are you creating margin in your pocketbook to be, to be blessing others? To like say, see someone at the grocery store. At, at Lifeline, we always call it acts of kindness. We give away acts of kindness cards and, and we are trying to build it into our culture. I know Tiffany and I do this and we're, we're talking about it. We're trying to talk about it every single Sunday actually, that we would perform acts of kindness towards others and that could just be a $20 bill, a $50 bill, that we create enough margin in our, in our finances to say, hey, I see someone at the grocery store, she's, she's wrestling up like three kids, she looks like she might be a single mother and she's like trying to find the cheapest brand of rice. You know, I wanna be able to go over and just say, hey, God loves you and so do we, and hand a $50 bill over or a hundred dollar bill over and say, God sees you. I, I wanna create margin in my life where I can do that. And we've been blessed enough to, to create a budget early on in life and, and so that we can, we can build that in. I wanna see that for you too. I wanna see the body of Christ moving this way so that we can just bless others. My question for you is this, what is one thing you should stop spending money on so you can start spending money on the right thing? What is something that you could dial back so that you can lean into something that, that you, would, you would say for yourself is more important? Remember, what we manage well increases, but what we hoard for ourselves decreases. How do I wanna bring this home? <laughs> I wanna just share with you that there was once a young boy and there was once a young boy who was in a crowd of people and he was just just going along with with life and just doing what anybody would do he wasn't a rich kid but he had a little bit and one day um, someone someone came in to his life and and the, the boy and his family were traveling and then a man named andrew came up to him and asked for his, his, his allotment. Like this kid had the family's livelihood with him. He had the fish and he had the bread that this family was supposed to eat. And a man named Andrew came up to him and said, hey, my master needs that. Why don't you give it over to me? At first the boy didn't like that. After all, his family and he were, were poor and they needed that five pieces of bread and two fish for themselves. Matter of fact, that's all they had. More than this guy named Jesus needed it. The boy felt like maybe he was being taken advantage of. He felt angry, just like many of us would. Someone comes up and asks me to give my little bit. Pfft, who do you think you are? <laughs> he also felt that it might be the right thing to do though, deep down. Yeah, he couldn't see how things would work out if he did give his food away. On top of that, what would his family think? He would probably get in big trouble with his family, the, the ones that were closest to him. If he gave away what little they had to work with, what would the people around him say? What would his family say? He'd be getting in trouble with his dad. He'd let some stranger have his food. His family would go hungry, he just didn't add up. Just then the boy looked up and before, Right behind this guy named Andrew asking for it, he saw the man Jesus. And there was 5,000 families that were started to fade away in the boy's eyes. You know, there's people all around, but for a moment, just a moment, the boy felt a peace wash over him as a mustard seed of faith grew for him to give what little time, talent, and treasure he had. His hands, which were clutching the loaves and fish tightly, 
started to loosen up as he handed over the loaves and the fishes. And with the faith the size of a mustard seed, he handed over what he had to the master. He didn't know what was going to happen. He didn't know where his next meal was coming from. He didn't know what his family was going to say to him. And what happened next shocked more than all that was 10,000 in attendance, including family members. And if you know what I'm talking about, you know, I'm talking about a parable in the Bible. The master, Jesus, multiplied what had been given so that it fed all 10,000 plus people and there was 10,000 loaves and fishes more left over to send home with everybody. I want to ask you, what are you hanging on to today? What are you clutching on to tightly when it comes to your time, your talent, or your treasure that you just are refusing to give up? I'm praying that God would give you the peace to let that go so that it can be multiplied and used to bless the kingdom of God, bless the people around you, and bless your own life. I want to pray for you today. Father, I pray for, I pray for faith the size of a mustard seed. That's all we need, God. That's what you said. That's all we need. I'm praying for the people on the other end of this screen, Lord, that you'd give us the faith we need to let go and to be good stewards and be good managers of what we've been given, the time, talent, and treasure, Lord, that we would manage it well so that we could see an increase, not just for ourselves, but for others around us. And Lord, I pray for anybody hurting in any of these areas with time. They don't feel like they have enough time. Lord, I pray blessing over them. Lord, they don't feel like they have enough treasure, not enough money. Lord, I pray blessing over them that we would trust you. I pray for anybody that feels like they don't have enough skills or talents to give anybody else. Lord, that that lie would be demolished in Jesus' name, that, that we would see how much we really have to give. I'm so grateful for every single person listening to this, and I pray that they would have the faith to receive. In Jesus' name, amen. Now listen, if you want to take any next steps with us, the link is in the description. We would love to see you come through Growth Track, plan a visit, or, or fill out a connection card just so you can get to know us more. And we would love to connect with you as well. So as always, if you would like, comment, and share, it would really help to get this content out. You never know who needs to hear this message today and break free from some things that have been holding them back. I'm praying for a breakthrough for you and uh, we will see you the next time that we release one of these midweek mentors. We love you, God bless you, and we'll see you again very soon.